It's the summer of 1987 in Thatcher's Britain. The stock market is booming. It's the era of loads of money, and Frank McAvenny wants his share. Other big-name footballers in England are pursuing cash too. English clubs are now banned from European competitions after the Heysel disaster, and against historic trends, well-known players from England are heading north for Scotland. Several internationals sign for Glasgow Rangers. McAvenny signs for Celtic. It makes for an explosive mixture, and the first Old Firm match of the season has a unique and dramatic outcome. The manager, I think the last words he says, we don't get involved. <laughs> this is Barnes. An awkward one for Woods. Uh, I think in the first five minutes, Frank had put me in the back of the net. Under intense pressure from Frank McAvenny. And the referee didn't give a free kick. So I thought the next time he comes, uh, I'd try and get my, my own back a little bit. It was an incident where Mr McAvenny ran towards the ball, which was picked up by Mr Woods. Unfortunately, Mr McAvenny kept coming, and all of a sudden I saw the elbow going up from Mr Woods, and it struck Mr McAvenny in the face. Mr McAvenny retaliated. And then there was a an interruption at that moment by Mr Butcher, who came in obviously quite angry. He was joined at that moment by Mr Roberts, and the next thing was that Mr McAvenny went down, holding his face. I liked, you know, having a bang at the goalkeeper, you know, just to let him know that I'm there. Stop kidding on, kidding people on and having a laugh. Basically, that's what I just let them know. See how brave they are. Certainly appears to be a red card for McAvenny. He sent Frank off, and as he Frank like sent him off, I realised that I was going as well. And a red card also for Chris Woods. Rangers versus Celtic. Always an intense and emotional atmosphere, and one the English players were not quite prepared for. Until you're actually playing one, you, you can't understand how much passion and sort of the hatred between the supporters is there. I must confess, the hairs at the back of my neck were standing because I was very much afraid that we were going to have serious public disorder. Dozens of people trying to go over the chain link fencing off the ground. I was conscious that we had a dreadful incident in 1980 where at Hamden Park Rangers and Celtic fans stopped the game completely and we were obliged to bring on the mounted police officers to actually clear the, the ground. Remembering this experience, the police now decided on a unique course of action. Police in Scotland have charged three international footballers with conduct likely to cause a breach of the peace. We were told that we had to go down to Govan Police Station. Um, just felt like criminals then, you know. <laughs> that was a watershed in the sense that that was the first time that the judiciary had interfered and decided the conduct was such that it had to be treated as a criminal offence. And so the England captain, goalkeeper and a key defender all ended up in a Scottish court alongside the irrepressible Frank McAvenny. It was like carnival outside with the press, but uh, we knew each other and we sat with each other all week. We had a laugh, you know, all that week. You know, it got us off training for a week. For the Englishman, waiting for the verdict was not such a laughing matter. Absolutely frightened out of my life because nobody knew which way they were going to go. And then when Chris stood up and he, he was the first one to be found guilty, the, f the rest of us, we just looked at each other and said, well, we're all going to get found guilty. Yeah. Terry was the next one, and then I was not proven. And then Frank, when he got found not guilty, he laughed. For him starting the whole situation, I find that quite ludicrous, but... You know, they couldn't even beat us in court that year, which was a good thing, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Good play by Rogan. Equaliser by McAvenny. For Frank, life just got better and better. His goals helped Celtic win the league and now the cup. But in the crowd watching the, the cup final at Hampden Park was someone who would change Frank's life and make a tabloid dream come true. A football rogue met a page three star. 
I loved her eyes. I know it sounds funny, but I thought she had great eyes. Honestly, did I thought she? Part of the obvious, but she's great, you know. But she was a pastry girl. And she was well known, and she introduced me to that life. So you know, it was a lot of plus factors for her. He would fly down after a game on a Saturday, and we used to stay at a hotel in Mayfair every weekend. And then he'd, he'd go back really early Monday morning. <laughs> The fastest thing out of Celtic Park after a game on a Saturday was McAvenny. And then one of the slowest coming back up from London was McAvenny. Obviously, she had an attraction that we didn't have in Glasgow for him at that time. He came back tired, obviously. I remember asking him one time the kind of uh, things that he did and what the heck he didn't do. And I said, you know, I said, you'd be cheaper buying your own plane. Frank never did like Mondays and was regularly fined by Celtic. He was always looking to get back to London. It was the 80s, there was always more cash to be made. Well, I think that the lifestyle that Frank had, he had to generate cash all the time and the, the one way you can generate cash in football has been moving. And I knew it was inevitable it was going to happen. I just tried to delay it as much as possible.